My work in recent years has focused on four different what I call syndromes um, of corruption. The United States falling into a category that I think of as influence markets. And it's tempting as you look at the U.S. in comparison to some of the um, uh, more disrupted parts of the world to think of influence market corruption as inconsequential or as um, even benign. Um, it's a serious concern. Um, it tends to decrease the openness and the competitiveness of politics, of markets. It tends to make our society more um, inflexible, more sort of ossified at the top. Um, it tends to make the exercise of power and influence more remote from uh, citizens. And it seems to me that that's partly what citizens are reacting to as they see money as having, having debased uh, democracy. The, the overwhelming majority, almost all, of the, the money in the political system comes in and goes out within the law. It's publicly disclosed. Um, the, the law, however flawed it is, is enforced in reasonably effective fashion by the Federal Election Commission. You can even get online and enter your zip code and find out who's getting money from your neighbors and in, in what amount and when. Um, and yet, uh, the the net effect of all of that information has been to persuade people that the uh, the system is drowning in money. Um, this comes back to a classical conception of corruption in which the issue is not so much a particular deed or a particular person as that the system is no longer able to earn the credibility to command the support of citizens. And uh, even if citizens misunderstand the way campaigns are financed and what the implications are, and I think for the most part uh, most of us misunderstand it, um, that lack of support, that lack of credibility in a democratic system is a serious corruption problem. The pessimist in me thinks the difference will be mostly that people are starting out more disillusioned this year from the very beginning um, than in most years, especially um, uh, 2008 for, uh, for the Democrats, and that that uh, disillusionment is likely to, to, to deepen and continue. Um, it will be, like many recent campaigns, it will be one that um, will be volatile up until um, you know the final phases, and then people will be very glad it's over, um, rather than uh, you know believing that some uh, um, you know something important has been decided. People will see it as uh, as more of the same, and I think that's uh, that's not a contrast with past years, but I think the disillusionment is likely to be uh, likely to be deeper. It, it's often hard to disentangle cause and effect. I mean, it seems to me that many people think campaign contributions are the cause of inequality, are the cause of the uh, uh, public policies they don't like. In, in many ways, the contributions are the end product. The ability to make those contributions is the result of a lot of deeper kinds of dynamics in the system. And, um, you know, frankly, under any system of campaign finance I can think of, uh, wealthy and powerful interests will have disproportionate influence. Uh, that's just the nature of, uh, of an electoral uh, political system. We could be a lot more creative than we are. We could come up with creative matching formula for uh, small contributions. I mean, at the moment, at the presidential level, uh, small contributions from you and me get a small one-to-one -one match. We could make that a three to one or a four to one uh, kind of match. And uh, there are uh, people like uh, Michael Malbin who have studied the implications of that and have suggested that you'd get quite a different uh, pattern of funding and even of participation um, if we were creative that way. We could provide subsidies to challengers uh, to make them competitive. Um, the problems with all of these uh, uh, ideas is that the law will be written by incumbents and incumbents are not going to write a law that will strengthen the people who are running against them. So um, we're caught in a dilemma that way. One of the most striking things to me is that each round of political finance reform in the last, um, well, let's say 35 or 40 years has strengthened incumbents. And in fact, the most recent major round of uh, 2002, I think, should have been called the Incumbent Protection Act. Um, decisions like Citizens United in the intervening time um, have made it, if anything, even, uh, even easier to um, channel large amounts of money to, uh, um, to people in ways that raise public concerns. So, um, you know, we've got, a, we've got an issue, but it's an issue that 
can't be understood or can't be addressed simply by counting up the dollars and publicizing where they come from. It's, uh, um, it's a kind of a corruption problem, put it this way, uh, trying to fix the corruption problem we have with our electoral system by regulating dollars is like trying to uh, do away with illegal gambling by arresting the horses. It's, it's just not going to work.